These are all of the films that I watched in 2023, reviewed in one sentence each. Coming from someone whose perspective doesn't matter, someone who doesn't know that much about movies at all, someone who is trying. <laughs> like, basically my self-assessment was that I don't really watch enough movies, and so this year I've made a concentrated effort to try and like watch more. I made a Letterboxd account and I was like, I'm gonna commit to this. I need to catch up on some classics, understand the conversation about the current big movies. And so that's what I tried to do. I'll leave a link to my Letterboxd account down below if you're interested. But I'm not like a film buff who's gonna be like, Casablanca is the best movie of all time. Mostly because I haven't seen Casablanca <laughs> and I have no intention to. Like every time I get on a flight, they have Casablanca on the plane, on the TV thing, and I'm always like, oh, I should watch Casablanca. And then even on two 20 hour flights to and from Singapore, I still at no point in those 20 hours ever got low enough to be like, yeah, now is the time. Now is the time, I'm gonna... I was never bored enough to be like, I'm gonna watch Casablanca right now. One day I'll watch Casablanca. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm never gonna watch Casablanca. I'm sorry. I'm sure Casablanca is great. I just, I'm never gonna watch that movie. I'm like fine with the knowledge that other people say it's great. I just, I'm never gonna be part of that conversation and that's okay. So anyway, um, Casablanca aside, that's, spoiler alert, that's not on the list. As you know, I do love the craft of storytelling and it's something I think about constantly and I think you can tell based on the movies that I like that the craft of storytelling is the thing I always kind of prioritize when I'm consuming media. So every year I make a video on my main channel of all of the books that I read in the previous year reviewed in one sentence each, and today I thought I would do the same with movies here on my second channel. So without further ado, firstly we have The Menu. And this was genuinely the most fun I've ever had in the cinema. Like I feel like I had an experience with all of the people around me in that room, in the theater, just like the people on the screen were having a, an experience together in the room that they were in. I guess maybe because the way that information is fed to them is fed to us as the audience at the same speed. I felt like this worked just so well. This was delicious. I want this on the menu every time. Triangle of Sadness was an absolute riot. I just felt like the final third of the movie was a little bit too long. I wish it had just been condensed down a little bit. The triangle was a little lopsided, you know? But so close to a perfect movie. Bullet Train. If this wasn't based on a book, I would believe if you told me that they just made this up as they went along because the plot just kind of runs away from them it feels like two hours of nonsense like time I will never get back if I could describe like what I enjoy it would be the exact opposite of this of an age was the first time I've ever seen a professional movie and thought to myself I think I could actually act better than this <laughs> even if I hadn't seen the script and didn't have a single rehearsal you know? Nope, actually I think, yep. This was a fever dream, but one I did not want to wake up from. Thank you, Jordan Peele. Thank you for your services. Ready Player One was just aggressively average, and that's okay. It was just monumentally fine. <laughs> Nomadland, Frances McDormand was acting like rent was due, and she overpaid. She gave that landlord a tip, a cash bonus, just incredible. Everything, everywhere, all at once is just a perfect movie, right? This really deserved best picture for me because I feel like the only medium this could have been delivered as effectively in was film, as a picture, you know? I, this couldn't have been a book, it couldn't have been a poem, you know, it couldn't have been a song, it just, this is the exact way this story needed to be delivered. And when you're watching it, you're just like, this is cinema. Like, this is why movies matter. And I loved it. The Whale, I kind of wish that Sadie Sink had performed her character in like a slightly different way. That was the only thing that I didn't like about this movie and it did make me ugly cry. Tar, just 10 out of 10, no notes. Not a single one. Kate Blanchett, standing ovation. Incredible. I liked her a lot. That was so good. After Sun, oh, I was on such a winning streak at this point. This movie is like a punch in the stomach that you would say thank you for. Thank you so much for, for that. Super Mario Bros movie, I slept through almost the entire thing and still 
the plot made total sense because it's so predictable. But what I saw was fun. It's colorful and bright and silly and charming. I just had jet lag. <laughs> and even though I missed a lot of this movie, I feel no desire to like try to see it again, you know? Sorry, Mario. Sorry to that man. Oppenheimer. So I was actually at the premiere where all of the actors walked out on strike for Oppenheimer. Like, that's part of history. That's kind of crazy. And I found this movie very intense because of how punchy and kind of episodic it was. I felt like I wish I had done a Wikipedia crash course, like skim read, like a brush up refresher, just so I could have followed this a little easier because there were so many characters who I was trying to work out kind of who they were. And the movie just doesn't explain at any point. You know, it just says, you work it out, bitch. It kind of felt a bit like a supercut of all of the action that happened, which I understand because they had a lot to cover. Also, I did get whiplash when Josh from Drake and Josh was suddenly just on the screen in like a pretty important role that I was not expecting. I hope Emily Blunt gets her Best Supporting Actress nomination because she deserves it. There's this kind of like quite traumatic scene right at the very end and I thought that was really and truly perfection. Now I'm sure you can guess what the next movie I saw was, but before I get onto that I just wanted to let you know that today's video is very very kindly brought to you by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building a website or an online brand and the best news is you don't need any coding experience, you don't need to be a website developing whiz. They actually have hundreds of incredible and really easy to use templates. So you can let your creativity soar by just adapting these templates, using them as a kind of launch pad and also having access to a ton of incredible features including the ability to make an email sign up list, start a blog, have really great analytical tools, and there's also a free trial on squarespace.com so you can have a little play around and test it out, and then when you feel ready to launch your beautiful new website, you can use the code jackinthebooks at squarespace.com slash jackinthebooks to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you so, so much to Squarespace for working with me on this video, and for basically being one of the most consistent things in my life. I love you so much. Okay, the next movie, I'm sure you can guess what it is. It was Barbie. I mean, this was just a spectacle. From the music, to the colours, to the cast, to the elaborate sets, the writing, the jokes. Greta Goig is a genius. I just wish that the trailer hadn't given away, like, the first 30 minutes of the film. The next movie I saw was Barbie. <laughs> Again, I this is the only movie I've ever been to see in the cinema twice, so that tells you all you need to know. Then I watched The Wild. Now, this was nowhere near as good as I remember it being. I feel like I had some kind of weird Mandela effect where like, I remembered, me and my friends who watched this together all remembered it being really, really excellent. And then we were kind of underwhelmed when we watched it again in 2023. I, I watched this on a hangover, which made me like <laughs> more intolerant, but I felt like we were watching this for nostalgia and I actually didn't really get any. I just felt a bit like disappointed. Nigel the Koala is still an icon though. I just remember this being a five star movie in my head. And then when I watched it this time, I was like, this is scraping too. Two stars at best, you know? And that's generous. I think maybe I was just mistaking it for Madagascar. <laughs> maybe I just kind of conflated those two movies in my head. And I know that I wasn't just being stubborn and mean because I was hungover, because I also in the same hangover period watched Bones and all, and I thought this was great. I thought this was insane. Timmy and Taylor ate, quite literally. Theatre camp, I have to say, was way funnier than I anticipated it being, but you know, it did also remind me why theatre kids get bullied, and I'm saying this very much as a recovering theatre kid. I was like, oh, maybe the theatre kids are the villains. <laughs> After all, this is like when you realize that Sharpay isn't the villain in High School Musical and it's actually Gabriella. Like, I was watching this movie thinking, Oh, maybe the theatre kids actually are quite annoying, <laughs> you know? Red, white, and royal blue was so cheesy, it nearly triggered my lactose intolerance, but in the way that I still love cheese, even though it does trigger my lactose intolerance. I want a charcuterie board of this. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I cannot believe that I hadn't seen this before, because it's just so culturally important. This felt like essential watching and it was so much fun. Emily, this was one for the book nerds about the life of Emily Bronte. I adored this movie. You know, if you love Cottagecore or Dark Academia, this will just be so up your street. Immaculate vibes. Chef Kiss, perfect. Black Swan. So I'm realizing literally right now that I've been going around telling people that I watched Swan Lake, not Black Swan, which is me, the looks people are giving me make a lot more sense now because of the way I then went on to describe it. You know what I mean? So that's, I have some explaining to do, but I 
loved this movie so much. I thought this was spellbinding and wonderful and I understand the critical acclaim this movie has. I understand why it's such a fan favourite and I like when things are just like a little bit weird and psychological. This was a win for me. I liked this. Elvis, technically I did see but it was kind of like a more of like a Netflix and chill situation, so I, I don't know what happened in this movie. Sorry! Past lives. If anyone wants to help me to locate the tiny little pieces of my broken heart, that would be really helpful because this shattered me. That That's all I have to say. No Hard Feelings, I think, had some funny moments, but they're all in the trailer, you know? And the rest of it is just fluff and slapstick comedy between the funny moments that are in the two minute trailer. So if you've seen the trailer, you have seen the movie. You, you There's no real need to watch this after seeing the trailer. So that's, that's how I feel. Get Out was somehow even better than Nope. Like I'm just on my hands and knees bowing down to Jordan Peele at this point. I don't know how he does it. Good Will Hunting, I think might be one of my new favorite movies of all time, just like the dialogue. The If I could write dialogue like that, I would be elated. My feet are chilly because this movie knocked my socks off. Then that's all I have to say. The creator, I mean, this is visually really stunning. I think they used like 50 different locations in Thailand and it is completely and utterly gorgeous. However, the plot, missing in action. What the hell was going on? The plot is kind of naff and it really relies on this really clumsy exposition between fight scenes to explain what the actual stakes are here and what's actually going on. I also feel like it's an AI movie that they started making five years ago and it shows because it's already outdated, you know? This movie coming out in 2023, I was like, I feel like we've moved on from this perception of AI. And also when characters are killed, it's so not clear which side they're on. Like are they the, the good guys or the bad guys or, or who are they? Are they just innocent civilians? So people kept being killed and I just felt like it was irrelevant because I didn't know if I was rooting for them or not. So this just felt a little bit pointless. This is definitely like a pass, not a smash. Glass Onion, however, smash. A really interesting style of storytelling that makes you think about how we perceive things and how two things can be true at the same time or how we can interpret certain events in two totally different ways given different contexts. It makes you question every interaction. This was just a blast to watch. House of Gucci. Great gowns. Beautiful gowns. King Richard, round of applause, standing ovation. Oh, I loved this. This story of Serena and Venus Williams' upbringing and Coming of Age and Family is just one of my favorite movies that I saw this year. So good. A Man Called Otto. Aside from the title being slightly changed from the book, this is a relatively faithful adaptation. I just think that the book is so much better because of the way we can see inside someone's head in a novel. I think this is a story that is just better told in book form, but it was charming. It was fine. I just think if you're going to consume this, read the book. It's also like the ultimate aeroplane movie, I think. This is so aeroplane coded. The girl with the pearl earring is just Scarlett Johansson walking into rooms and being meek and then leaving again. This, I hated this movie so much, like to my core, I am a hater of this movie. If this movie has 100 haters, I'm one of them. If it has one hater, I'm one of them. If it has zero, I am dead. One star, snooze fest, I thought this was so boring. I guess it's meant to be atmospheric, but the atmosphere it created was dull. Saltburn, I thought was so incredibly written. Having been to Durham University, this just, like the beginning of this movie, I think was such an accurate depiction. Emerald Fennel's writing is absolutely sublime. This is so funny. Give Rosamund Pike all of the awards possible. Witty and quick and also a bit silly and so inspired by Books like Brideshead Revisited. I can't wait until I can see Saltburn again. Then we have The Goldfinch, which just keeps going and going and going. And Babylon, which just keeps going and going and going. Except so this one descends into kind of like anarchy. I wish this had been edited down because it started off so strong, like such a visual treat, and then collapsed kind of into itself. And now my battery's about to die, but that is the end of the list. So thank you for watching. All the best. Stay in touch. Have a wonderful day. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.